Thank you, and, and good afternoon. It's good to see some, some old friends there. Um, I'm going to just have a few slides just to introduce this topic um, and talk about some of the, the um, advantages and disadvantages. First of all, this is just a, a comparison of current PMTCT guidelines in uh, resource-rich and resource-limited countries. In the U.S., our guidelines call for uh, effective combination antiretroviral therapy, or HART, uh, regardless of CD4 or viral load. And we generally use PI-based regimens. We monitor women with uh, viral load testing. We uh, do resistance testing at the beginning of pregnancy or with evidence of failure. And we're, we are in a state of... of flux in terms of our management of women and the use of antiretroviral therapy continuing after delivery. Uh, currently, our adult guidelines uh, recommend uh, that, that ART be um, initiated or continued for everyone with CD4 counts less than 500 and with a, a moderate consideration to consider this with women in, and adults in, with higher CD4 counts. Um, after delivery, in general, if the woman has received antiretroviral therapy, the infant receives idovudine for six weeks, and breastfeeding is, is discouraged. As you know, in more resource-limited settings, the WHO has had two primary options for prophylaxis only with starting lifelong maternal heart with CD4 counts below 350 or WHO stage 3 and 4. And the prophylaxis options until recently have been two, option A and B. Option A with zidovudine only from 14 weeks until labor, uh, single-dose single nevirapine in labor, and then uh, continuing zidovudine and 3TC in labor and for seven days postpartum where option B is triple antiretroviral therapy, essentially heart. And then the, with option A, the infant receives nevirapine uh, daily throughout the course of breastfeeding. With option B, uh, where the mother is continuing uh, combination therapy through breastfeeding, the baby still receives nevirapine or zidovudine for four to six weeks. Next slide, please. Um, so for limited resource settings, there's some problems with the options A and B. One is that women often present to antenatal care late in pregnancy. Uh, and some, uh, I pulled some recent DHS reports, and, and the median gestational age for the first antenatal visit uh, is often around five months or more. We also know from some fairly recent data that longer duration of antiretroviral exposure is associated with earlier control of viral replication in the mother and lower rates of transmission. We also know that total fertility rates uh, are high and that multiple pregnancies mean multiple interrupted exposures to antiretrovirals. And so there are concerns about starting and stopping regimens, particularly with NNRTI regimens such as nevirapine or favarins where uh, there is a longer or mismatched uh, half-life between the NNRTI component and the NRTI component and concerns about development of resistance. And then furthermore, there's a fair amount of data in non-pregnant adults which suggests that treatment interruptions is, may be harmful, increasing the risk of progression and mortality. Um, furthermore, uh, and this is true really around the world, uh, there, it, it appears that on average HIV-infected individuals, about 50% have HIV-negative partners, so they're in serodiscordant relationships. And we believe, and the evidence shows, that, that transmission from an HIV-positive spouse or partner accounts for a large proportion of these new infections. Uh, we also know uh, from the landmark study, HPTN052, that antiretroviral therapy in the infected partner can decrease sexual transmission 
by 96% or more. And then um, there are evolving evidence, I, I alluded to them, in terms of the benefits of earlier treatment. This is particularly true for treatment of individuals who have CD4 counts less than 350, where observational studies and secondary analyses from randomized trials show a increased risk of progression and increased risk of death when uh, antiretroviral therapy is deferred to lower CD4 count levels, so uh, lower than 350. The data is more conflicting uh, when, if regarding initiating ART with CD4 counts above 500. Um, we do know that infant morbidity and mortality are closely linked to the health of the mother, so that treatment that is going to uh, help mothers be healthier and live longer are also going to help infants be healthier and survive. So option B plus um, it was uh, introduced as an option and has been accepted by the WHO as another option for prevention of mother-to-child transmission uh, in low resource areas and, and it constitutes lifelong antiretroviral therapy started in pregnancy regardless of disease status, so regardless of WHO stage, regardless of CD4 count. The regimen that has been, uh, has been uh, largely promoted is uh, uh, co-formulated efavirenz, tenofovir, and emtricitabine. Uh, as, as I noted, this is co-formulated it is one pill once daily, so it's a simple regimen. And I think what people's first reaction is this contains efavirenz, and we've been told and learned for many years not to use efavirenz in pregnancy. Um, there is a lot more reassuring data in the last couple of years on the use of efavirenz exposure in pregnancy, particularly regarding fetal neural tube defects. And the data is felt reassuring enough that we can probably rule out at least a five-fold increased risk, but perhaps not totally exclude risk. So it's more, um, it's more reassuring, but we still can't say with certainty that efavirenz exposure in pregnancy is safe. Uh, and still in the U.S., we do not recommend intentional use of efavirenz in women who are trying to become pregnant or in the first trimester um, starting in efavirenz. Another potential option, uh, another potential advantage for option B plus is that this regimen is effective in chronic hepatitis B infection. It may prevent the development of immune reconstitution syndrome. Um, and lower HBV viremia potentially preventing per, uh, perinatal transmission of HPV. I think it also offers the opportunity for simplified uh, programmatic uh, development and training, um, but yet we have limited programmatic experience and do not yet have an evidence base about how this option is going to work. Um, there are some potential disadvantages and concerns and other considerations. A big one is adherence. Uh, even though this is a simplified regimen, one pill once a day, uh, it's it still, there's a lot of concern about treatment fatigue in general, um, where it is difficult to maintain taking that when you're talking about lifelong treatment. And um, I think everyone in, uh, uh, in this audience knows that decreased adherence is associated with potential development of resistance and treatment failure. Um, furthermore, the NNRTIs, such as efavirenz, have a lower barrier to development of resistance. And so if you, you can develop resistance easier, and there's the risk of cross-class resistance to other NNRTIs. Um, a recent uh, systematic review and meta-analysis on adherence in pregnancy, looking at uh, available data from both high and low resource areas, found that only about 
uh, three quarters of pregnant women achieved optimal ART adherence. And that dropped to about 53% in the postpartum period. So I think there may be special concerns about adherence in the postpartum period, uh, taking care of a new baby, the potential increased risk of postpartum depression, stigma, um, and the question, will long-term adherence be more of a problem for women who are first diagnosed with HIV in pregnancy? and they are started on antiretroviral therapy because it is urgent to try to prevent transmission. But it may be a different thing for them to uh, think about continuing therapy after delivery when they are still dealing with the reality of a new diagnosis. There are also concerns about retention and care. And there's been some recent data that raises concerns that women who are pregnant or uh, after pregnancy may be higher risk for loss to follow-up. Um, in uh, some studies, up to 28% of HIV-infected women who enroll in uh, antenatal care are lost prior to delivery, and while eight out of every 10 are lost at six months postpartum. Um, linkage to ongoing HIV care after pregnancy is key, but stigma is a huge barrier. Um, as is lack of integration into all ongoing reproductive care settings and child care settings. And then we're still not doing a very good job of reaching pregnant women with prevention strategies anyway. In Sub-Saharan Africa, um, only 40% of pregnant women deliver in facilities, um, and PMTCT coverage is only approximately 50%. Um, and then there are concerns about potential toxicity, drug interactions, um, for, both for moms and then for infants. Next slide. Um, the um, infant, keep in mind that the infant exposure would include during pregnancy and also during breastfeeding. We already mentioned concerns about efavirenz. Uh, the data on uh, tenofovir, particularly related to fetal bone development, is fairly limited. And so there's a lot of importance for pharmacovigilance. Um, adverse pregnancy outcomes has, has been newly renewed as an, as an issue. The data over the last uh, decade or so from the U.S. And, and Europe has been somewhat conflicting. Uh, but suggest that there may be a small increased risk, uh, particularly with preterm delivery and particularly with PI-based regimens. Recently, there was a large study reported from Botswana um, that, uh, that found that heart or combination antiretroviral therapy in pregnancy was associated with an increased risk of preterm delivery, small for gestational age infants, and stillbirth, and this was independent of maternal CD4 count, so it wasn't only linked to women who were being diagnosed and treated with in late stage disease. And the uh, adjusted odds ratios range from 1.2 for preterm uh, delivery to 2.5 for stillbirth. So this is renewed discussion about fetal exposure and uh, or, or exposure in pregnancy and what this might mean in terms of some uh, pretty serious adverse pregnancy outcomes. And then furthermore, there are obvious uh, concerns about cost, about sustainability and supply chain, and about the infrastructure to develop this. Um, I think other considerations is that this may facilitate new opportunities for integration of care. Uh, there have been several community-based and community-oriented strategies showing promise in improving retention along the PMTCT cascade. Um, option B plus may offer new opportunities along this line. Uh, we, we know that lack of integration of maternal and infant services is associated with greater attrition in care and delays in infant uh, diagnosis and treatment, as well as increases in transmission. Uh, in Zambia, integration of ART provision into antenatal care was associated with a higher proportion of women 
enrolled in HIV care and provided with treatment. Um, but I want to remind you that there's still going to be need for laboratory support, um, CD4 counts, uh, to monitor treatment and need for other um, uh, prophylactic treatment, toxicity monitoring, and ultimately, hopefully, we'll have uh, inexpensive and point-of-care uh, assessments for viral load and ultimately resistance assays. And uh, finally, we still need to remember that there are other pieces to this. There's still a high unmet need for contraception. And um, the, the high fertility rates include uh, pregnancies that occur that are not planned and are not intended. Uh, and the data in HIV positive women is that unintended pregnancies may account for uh, well over half of these. And still in the U.S. population, in the general population, unintended, unintended pregnancies are approximately 50 percent. Um, the need for better contraception is also going to impact birth spacing, which is going to be associated with better maternal and infant outcomes. And then finally, remember that as we have rolled out our general antiretroviral treatment programs and are seeing these succeed and seeing uh, women, men, and children return from uh, very dire circumstances and have the possibility of living longer and healthier lives, that we also may see a, a res restoration of fertility as women become healthier with treatment so that some of these issues are going to, are going to uh, become even more important as time goes on.